Looking good. Welcome back to part eight. Well, we got the hot side of the exhaust pretty much done last time. So let's get the cold side done. Get the gauges in the front where I can see them and let's give it a try. This goes against all nature, doesn't it? Oh, I think I need two hands for this. So what I've done is made a hole in that. Oh God. It's gonna work, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> so we've got gauges on there. They, they've come through that very small hole and here are the cables here to connect up. Yay. The next process we need to do is I've just whacked this on just as a temporary measure. I'm gonna swap this throttle body for the earlier throttle body so I can run this idle control valve piping straight to that what was the breather and the breather down there as a temporary measure I'm just going to vent that to atmosphere just for now and that one that goes to the in that manifold we'll just vent that as well just for now just to get the just to get it working so bolt out of that bit at the back there for this giant thing this hose clip here this pipe here this idle up valve reference pipe like so next off slide out Place on floor. Okay, now you have this, which is very clean. It was about three years ago. I stopped the EGR working on this. So it's clean. Okay. Hose on the top. Off. Cables. It's cruise control cable. Top cable. Gearbox line pressure cable. A couple of 14 mil spanners. Slack the nut off a little bit. Off they pop. Pull them round. I can't do this with one hand. Unhook them from each of these. Pop this clip off. Whole thing pops out the back. Take it off. Double position sit, switch plug. And off. Line pressure cable. Comes off like so. Tuck it out of the way. Two nuts, two bolts. With the two nuts, two bolts off, you can then release the throttle body. Bear in mind there are still uh, the breather hose still attached to it and also the coolant pipes which you can pretty much only get to from when you take it off and yank it out. When you pull it off and pull it out we can undo that breather pipe quite easily and now you can get to these two water hoses still clean after three years and they're off they don't tend to leak much so I just stick a bolt in them and sit there 
uh, clips back on. Okay, so that's that. I'll just drain in whatever water's left in it. Now I can compare the two in a second. I'm gonna pinch this gasket off there because I want to make a new one. So this is a 96 throttle body. You see this hose is pretty small for the breather into the rocket cover. Quite small. Water in, water out, or vice versa, I'm not sure which. Uh, the brackets and everything look the same. If you compare it, the brackets and everything on this one, this is the Gen 1. Pretty much the same. We find a difference in this breather pipe, which is very small on the 96 and on the 89 to 94, much bigger. This one's facing the other way because I've, I've turned it round 180 degrees. It was facing that way, the same as this. But this is, I want to try and use this for my idle control um, pipe. Because obviously with the boost pipe on it, I've got nowhere to take that or put it in. So everything looks the same until you get down there and then everything's not the same. Let's investigate that further. The 96 has got this on the top, and the 94 does not. There's not even any extra brackets that there is for this one. That's the only difference I can find. Father bigger breather so I made a new gasket from this stuff so there's my new breather pipe it's gonna just come off there and go somewhere else <laughs> not sure yeah where yet and take this hose off here as well Let's see if I can Connected up to something on the throttle body. The new gasket in place. So this is my first attempt at making something round into something rectangle. Uh, so this pipe can sit underneath the front cross member. I put a, a pipe there and it was just too low. And that works much better, as you can see. Yeah, that is a long charge pipe under the front cross member and up there between the radiator and the front of the engine. Just enough room for that to fit. I'm not happy about that pipe sticking down so far. Okay, so this is the intake. We've still got our math sensor in there. Connected up to there. I managed to get a 60 degree bend to fit in there. I've had to lose the igniters from there. Not sure how much. Maybe I can get them tucked under there. Maybe, especially if I take them off this big bracket and get creative. So, uh, also that bracket there, I had to bend over, but if, if this works out okay, I'll, I'll just cut that off. Uh, so what this does, 
This is from a Volvo Penta Marine engine, this piece. And when the turbo is at the back and that charge pipe goes all the way to the back of the car, when you like blip the throttle, it's got to drag all the intake air all the way from the turbo all the way to the front and that kills throttle response and, and all your low down grunt is kind of lost so what this does this has got a flap inside here which is just under gravity it's hinged in there under gravity it just swings shut and when you blip the throttle, the vacuum just pulls that open and the car's naturally aspirated again, straight in. And as soon as we start making some boost through here, we charge this pipe, we charge the inlet manifold and this flap is pushed closed by the boost. It gives a really good seal as well. I mean, I, I think those Volvo engines are something like 30 odd PSI. So if it's good for that, it's good for this. Now I can swap this throttle body for the first gen, which I've got the breather pipe there. I've got an adapter come in, so I can route this pipe into the throttle body. So we've still got idle. Uh, this was for the idle up valve, which is just blanked it off with those two bolts for now until I can get down there and put a cap in it that I've got coming. Uh, so I'm going to use this potentially as a boost reference line. So I've got boost reference at the turbo and boost reference at the manifold because I just thought that would be more interesting. <laughs> Wouldn't be so bad if the turbo was up here, but that's why I need two. Anyway, so that's where we're at with this. I just gotta make a link pipe up for these two. Get rid of this old one. I was gonna kinda use this for low boost, but I don't know how long it would last before it split apart. Who knows, but I'm quite pleased with this now. It took me a long time to get it as short as possible. But when I go standalone, this math will be gone, so I can make the whole thing even neater. Okay, this is the path that the charge air has to take. In a rear mount turbo. Okay, so we exit the turbo with the round underneath. This is the rear axle. This is a two meter stretch, runs into the main body of the car. Okay, this piece is the under the cross member section. These 90 degrees are, are not representative of where they are in the car, this is just to make it show you the length and went to the air box. And if I meet her, and finally the throttle body. It seems like a lot for the charge air to take. The cold side, but this is the length. It is 18 feet long. And now, a fuel pump change. I've sped this up considerably because, uh, because it's been a bit boring, but I'll put the proper video on the Facebook channel if you really want to see that. Because the Warbro pump, the pre-filter fits completely the wrong way round on that, I had to um, put the 
Toyota one on, but it was no bother and it fitted perfectly, so yeah, good stuff. Okay, so I've swapped over to the 94 throttle body. Everything fits okay. The, the throttle cable's not a fantastic fit in there. I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit. But everything else fits fine. We've now got the idle control going here through this reducer, three quarter, five eighths, and that's going into the throttle body. And there, our breather comes around here and we'll go off to the catch tank somewhere over there. I'm gonna need a Y piece to take both of those breather pipes into the catch tank. Until I can find something better, I'm just mounting the igniters there. Throwing a bit of paint on there. Hopefully that shouldn't cause an issue. Okay. I had some problems getting it started yesterday. And that was because I had put these igniters down here because they live here and uh, they're earthed through the body. So, yeah, just whack that in just to get it going again. It was something I'd considered, um, but then totally forgot about, as you do. Okay, so you can see what I've done with the little control valve. That feeds into there. Other than that, everything's pretty stock in here. Got a, I need to get some blanks for those. Um, I still got to take that idle up valve off and put a cap in it. Um, but yeah, let's send it.